going to be on it. Oh, fun. But, like, why would you ever think I'm not ready for you to move forward? You know, Michael, that's not right. Well, all I know is if I find her, then I'll move forward. And I, I've met a few people, but I haven't, I haven't done anything with them just yet. You know what I think of you. You do what you, what you feel. You kind of project forward, but don't. Well, whatever. I don't want you to feel like you're not worthy. I don't like all the things that you think. I, I don't know, but. Like, You've gone through a lot since the transition of even going to Las Vegas to do documentary and things that at one time seemed super important. Now it seems like a clean slate. It seems like now it's a clean slate. You can just, again, you know, cover the canvas, get going on a new project, and we start from here on. The past is the past. It, it doesn't really matter when it comes to time. You know, no concepts concept of time is not necessarily bad, time is linear. No, no, it's and not I, linear. I don't, I don't feel forever with you, and I don't feel nothing, I don't feel present. I feel, I really, really don't, it doesn't matter, I don't care. It's, it's timeless, if that's, if that's a word I can put around time. I'd, I'd, I'd rather be less. Because it doesn't matter to me. 1 to 12 doesn't matter to me. I'm a 13. I don't function from 1 to 12. I'm not a dozen of nothing. I'm outside the box. And I've been stuck there since the day I was born. So it's not something I'm, I'm not used to. I've always been a 13. I've always been excluded. So I'm, I'm, I'm not scared. Why would I be scared? I've been alone the whole time. I can be the most popular person in the room, and I'm the loneliest. Well, you're the only one besides me in the room. Well, I mean, I'm not, not saying that. Like you and I on Skype. That's no big deal. People, people, you don't know. Team Michael, okay, okay, look at, like, I don't know if you play with Tiny Chat and these you know, the camera isn't alone, but do you know how many people could be watching this without even showing themselves in the room? Everybody. The entire world could be watching this right now and we wouldn't even know. Because you don't have to be logged into Tiny Chat with an ID to listen to us. Gary could be listening right now. No, I don't know about that. I think in order to see a channel, you have to okay. enter the room. But I do believe that everything is transparent. No, uh, on Tiny Chat. On Tiny Chat, I've listened to you guys bitch on Saturdays without me even logging in. Oh, right, without logging in, but you you still yeah, register. Yeah, I don't have to but I have no ID. No you still, ID. no, you register as a guest. You can't watch no, without no, being a guest. No, no, it's a different platform as an unidentified web user from my parents' house. My parents don't have uh, an ID, and they're not connected with Tiny Chat at all. But I logged in. I watched a uh, Gary video. I logged into Tiny Chat. I listened to you guys. And my parents were like, "What are you listening to?" And I called this listening to, to Midnight Tiny Chat. You're lying. You're and lying. Okay. You're lying. No. Lying. Lying. You're lying, Angela. Uh -huh. Okay. I'm not. I stayed with my mom on Saturday last week because we didn't know where Elizabeth was and Mom and I were getting along, so I stayed there too long. And then we decided to leave the hush here. And I had my iTouch with me. I left it playing. And I was listening to the MP3 of, of Tiny Cat. I wasn't in Tiny Cat, but I was listening to the MP3 of Tiny Cat. Right. And she said, what are you listening to? And I said, I'm listening to Tiny Chat. And we go there every Saturday and do it. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. Huh. She doesn't care. Like, why would anyone care about that? Our tiny cat shit is just us, like, sitting at a coffee table freaking out. Yeah, I just, you know, it's, it's cool having people in the room. It's that I don't... It's just weird that they're anonymous and that they're... 
they're only slightly um, like, interactive. If, if I log on, like at home, are you able to show like my picture? Like if I'm on camera, like can like do you know what I mean? Like when you're interviewing someone, can you tiny chat and bring in a, a viewer? Or how does tiny chat work? Like like I just log on and dock with you, right? And then it would just be you and I on headcam. Is that how it would work? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can log in and then dock. And right. Then so, what's the most people? Sixteen or fourteen? Uh, I think it's twelve. I think you know, tiny chair. You can only get you can dock twelve. Okay, so twelve. That's right, guys. All four of you could dock. I need to get by like the end of the week to come in. If you're gonna keep painting and focus on just painting, I can get the university art department. I can get students to log in. But like, then put on some classical music and don't listen to people like Gary and everybody else is going to be yelling at you and talking about shit of their own accord. No, no, I don't mind it. I don't, I don't mind you. I, I don't, don't mind, them. mind it. But I don't think you're looking at the potential of the students and the people that like really we just want to listen to classical music and paint. So can't you give some of us something? We don't want to hear fucking anti-natalism shit. We're really done with that. It's like fucking a long time running. I'm tired. I don't no. want to hear any more of that. No, no. We we weren't talking so much about anti-natalism when he was in. Well, that's yesterday. great. But I mean, is that like the paintings or the... I don't think so. So if you're not going to be the artist <laughs> that you are, well, I got nothing to work with then. If you're going to be the artist and you're on Tiny Chat to do your artwork, well then do your artwork. Maybe you know, if you're talking to me, you got to put me on speakerphone. You got to do your artwork, and I got to go home and I got to log on so I can see. You are on speakerphone. You're being recorded on YouTube. You're on Tiny I Chat. I know, but like I okay. got to get home so I can see. Yeah, well. Like that's the only flaw right now is that I can't see uh, what you're doing. So how about you just paint and I'll. Like, whatever, if you're still awake and you don't feel like crashing out early, I'll, I'll message you and say I'm home. Uh, I'm at my parents tomorrow night, and then I have another five hours for you tomorrow if you want to, and you want to try again. But I don't know, I haven't seen what that big painting is. And huh. it's one of the biggest ones you've done so far, so I'm, I'm kind of iffy. I don't know if I want to be part of it. Please never put me in the painting. Please never do that. Okay. Yeah, I don't... Like, please, Michael, I always beg you not to. Well, I am drawing hellish figures while we were on the horn together. And I've even drawn know, a big Michael, boob. I have always asked you, please, don't do anything in particular where we have to hang on to it. Right. We always want to be moving forward. I never want to hang on to one thing. There's so, only four me, ways. If you let me get home so that I'm, I'm there for you and then I dock on, then my face is there with you. And then it's a different tiny chat. As soon as I show myself, it's a different tiny chat. Oh, someone's saying that it's that hard for me to see shirt. what it is I'm painting. My, my video... Well, I don't know what you're painting. I'm just saying I don't look like hell today. You know, my hair looks okay and my dad asked me not to color it again. I've been dyeing my hair black for a while because I've been feeling really black. I was like, all look, I dressed like Spock for Halloween. I did a really good Spock. Um, but my hair is growing out now and I'm still coloring it black. And I brought over hair color to color my hair tonight at my parents. And my dad took the hair color away and he said he didn't want me to do it. He said he liked me the way I was and he, want, he wanted me to be the way I was. He's like, no, 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 just let it go the way it is. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that's nice of you, Dad. I took my hair dye away. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Well, my mom said, well, we like you better the way you are. We don't want you to cover it up anymore. Just be who you are. And I was like, oh, my God, are these the same people that arrested me? Well, I say dye it if you want to dye it, but... If you're doing no, it to cover yourself up. Fake. 
my dad's like, if that's who you are, really, if that's really who you are, we just thought you were faking it. That's why we we had you questioned. Well, we just didn't think that was really you. But now that they know it's really me, they're not stopping me. Uh-huh. And it's because, of, you know what's weird? It's because of all that Sleepy Hollow stuff and the, and the you know, Sherlock Holmes even, and Sleepy Hollow, though, because it all went to Revelations in the Bible. We all have the Bible out. We were reading the Bible in the Four Horsemen. All of us. Who's all of us? Like my mother and my father and I. Because we wanted to watch that sitcom, Sleepy Hollow. Right. And it kept talking about the Four Horsemen. So we went and got all our Bibles, and we were reading. We all stayed together after. Like, we're still together now, even tonight. It's because that show set something off, like the Sleepy Hollow, something about the Headless Horseman set something off. Yeah. In our family, like, does nobody know Revelations? I seem to be the only one who knew the book of Revelation. And I only know that, really, because of Auntie Neighbors, and I, I never really read it until, I never really read the Bible until I met Gary in 2006. I think is when I started reading the Bible, I was probably done it by 2008. Yeah. I know Revelation is inside and out, but only because I've read it so many times because there's so many different ways of saying it, and it doesn't make sense to me, and, and then Sleepy Hollow comes up with Ichabod Crane. Hang on a second. And I, Somebody wrote... I learn all this stuff about England and Britain, and then I feel like, oh great, we should talk I, to Great Tech. I just arrived in my apartment after winter break. I'm a college student. I'm unpacking. Perhaps I should have pose a question to Das Spook. What's up, dude? Everybody, what you talking about, Das Poop? <laughs> uh oh, I lost somebody. Oh well. Well, whatever. But like, but Gary, like Gary and other people, and the people that like, it might, it's, it's not like you have people that just love this book. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I I'm not I'm not maintaining a, a solid dialogue tonight I, I'm just you're the you're the topic you're what's up no, you're what's for dinner no Michael that's not it. like Michael we've been together a long time I really don't give a flying fuck what anyone thinks about us I don't so I don't really care who's listening to us at this point like I don't like I have no problem representing you I'm just saying you're what you're what people are listening to right now. Well, they always, and you know what? Do you know why? Because it's control. Like, Michael, like, think about it. What do they want from me? Uh, nothing. Like, think about it, Michael. Nothing. It's not, it's not proper. It doesn't really make sense to me. And you know me. I'm sketchy. you got to be joking. You're going to find me with a 10-foot pole. Well, I know you're going to wig out when you're... I don't want to do anything I don't want to do. Everything we talk about is going to be on the video, and then you're going to I freak don't out. I will fuck. You will later. No, I won't. You might. I'm not drunk. It's not like I'm drinking, and it's not like I'm an idiot. Like, I'm just talking to you like we normally do. They're my friends. You've been one of my best friends for a long time. I'm not scared of that. The college student is just of? listening to us. Well, then why are you recording it? I'm just recording it because I wanted later on to... Well, if you're scared of it, why do you let it happen then? I'm not. I'm trying to answer your question. I said I'm, I'm recording it because I want to be able to look back and see what it is my line of thought well, was. But it's not like I called in and asked you a question. I'm your friend and I've been here the whole time. It's not about you. I was talking about me. Okay, so should I ask you questions then? Okay, Michael, I was wondering, um, in October, did um, uh, did you sell any of your artwork? Did you put any projects out? Like the last time I remember checking in on your stuff, you were doing a kind of like a, a skip at a free market and I was really excited about to see if any, anything happened with that. Well, I sold prints in October. 
so yeah, I sold art in October. Right, so has it been difficult for you to sell your prints, or do you feel like the free markets are working for you, or, or like, is this a reason maybe we should talk more on the internet about, about the art, because it's kind of, it's kind of interesting to buy, like it's on, it's not, I don't know, it's not sold in the shop, so that's one thing I think is, is different from your art, it's not really something somebody can just go buy from a shop. You know, someone, to, like, somebody would have to find you. Someone just asked how much my prints go for. How do you think it's best to, to show your art other than the web page? What else, what else do you want your supporters to kind of like reflect if they can? To go from 20 to $100. Okay. And you can get a, a, a pretty good size print. 13 by 19 is the paper size, and that one would be $20, plus you'd have to pay for shipping. At, uh, Does everything have to be an actual print, or how much am I, how much, like if I'm a person who wants original paintings, like what do you know? Well, then, then they have to contact me and say what it is and, and what. Do your original paintings go over like $1,000? Yeah. Like, you know. Like, is Maestro over a thousand dollars? Like, if I wanted Maestro... No, Maestro... I don't want anyone else to have Maestro, so how do I make sure Maestro is not resold? Oh, well, then you buy it first, is what you do. But I, I don't think I'm going to sell right, Maestro. So if I buy it, so if I buy it, do I veto rights so nobody else can copy it? Just like you do. Like, do you know what I mean? Well, if you wanted to buy the rights off of me, then it's a, a different price. But right. the so thing is, I wouldn't. I, I'm not selling Maestro. I'm not selling Maestro for any cheap amount because the documentary title is going to be Maestro. Fine, and that's fine. Everything's fine. I just am particular about Maestro. No, I know because you've been lingering on it, but. Since he mentioned that the documentary is going to be tiled, Maestro, I kind of want to keep that piece as as meaning. Have you as been in contact with any filtering with Azranok? Uh, I haven't talked to Azranok in in well over a year, more more than a year. It's just that you know he was a lot part of that original project, and I just you know kind of thinking. You know, like, you know, all your energy that's built from now is really expressive, but, like, you know, you've always had true energy that really believe in you. You know that. Yeah, I know that. Maestro is a good, a good front forward. Maestro, Maestro should be at front. Love Maestro. That's the one I want. I love Maestro. Hey, have you started walking home yet? Pardon? Have you started walking home yet? No. Okay, I'll go right now. Okay, Michael, like, seriously. Like, we don't get anything done when nobody's in movement. So, yeah, I'm putting my socks and my shoes on. So I'll go. <laughs> but I'm just lazy. Like, I'm lazy. Yeah. I don't want to do anything. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, suit I'm yourself, really, I'm just saying. I'm dropping saying. A, paint, a bucket full of blue paint on the floor and saying, oh, I'll well, let it spread on the floor, I'll be happy and wanting to be a blob of blue on the floor. I'll wake up to a blob of blue, I'll be fine. A blob of blue. Blob of blue. Well, whatever. The two of us in the same house would be the biggest mess on the planet. Well, don't get your hopes up. Well, whatever. We try. We, we keep trying. So. Just give me a minute to get home. I'm still here. I'm not leaving me. I'll be right there. I just, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I'm going to lose my dog. I don't know if she can walk all the way home. Every time I think about going home, she wants to come with me, but I know she can't make the walk home, so it's a whole emotional fucking event to say goodnight here. Huh. So I'll leave her from now and I'll come back at 8 in the morning. Like, she just has to sleep by herself for the night. <laughs> for the 
I go home to the computer, you know, I need the computer because I don't have it here. She'll be fine. She'll be. She's not gonna die by tomorrow. You're right. She's not gonna die. I take uh, Laura oh, tabs she's not gonna die by tomorrow. She and antipsychotic medication. By she's a good girl. She seems really strong. And yeah, Laura tabs, antipsychotic medication, and a leave, and gabapentin, and I stop taking marijuana and smoking cigarettes and vaporizers. Notice how she's still talking. Yep, she's still talking. And my coma's over, so so is my relationship with my dog. Right on. See, I got some interesting people here surrounding me tonight, including yourself, well, Angela. Well, it doesn't really matter, but I mean, maybe to understand why my dog's name is hushed. It's the same word as a coma. Just hush, hush, hush. Just shut the fuck up. I don't want to talk about it. You know, losing my dog is not going to be fun. And you know, Michael, your cat, Lily, Lily, puppy. I just can't imagine. That's just fantastic. You're, you're kind of like taking that energy from me and letting me go. You're letting me know, well, after your dog's gone, I can be free. And I don't know, I'm not going to attach myself to, to that again. You do it if you want to. That's great for you. I'm glad you have Lily puppy. Yeah, but I But I have too. Rommel and Hush, and, and Hush is... Tasha is 17 years old this year. I have to let go of her, and <laughs> I'm, I'm in the opposite position you are. Oh, someone just mentioned 17 years on, on their type here. You know, here. you're a new parent. I'm an, I have to let go of my child. Like, hush, and my cat, you know, they're my babies. Like, I don't know what else to do. Well, I think my kitty's just in my back bedroom hanging out. No, I'm so happy that Lily is there. I'm so happy. Lily is really helping. Really, really helps me. Look, I don't worry so much, Michael. I don't I don't really sleep over you and stuff. I kinda like I let go I let go because like we have to sometimes. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't change our friendship at all. So fucking what? Mm-hmm. Life has to move on. And you're doing great. So give me a second. It's 10.25. I'll be home by 11. Okay? That's 1 o'clock your time. That's late. Okay. Or or if you're lazy and you just want to hang out and talk, you're more than welcome to go that route, too. You can, you can check out the really? video and see okay. what it is I'm painting. Well, no. The room will totally change the minute you put me on camera. It's all different. People yeah. will come just because they see what they want to see. So then you can fuck with that. People that are in the room now, if they want to wait around, or if they they know me and they know you, well, then that, those are our friends. You know? Visual people really aren't my friends. You know, I don't like that people just like the look of me. I like people that like me for me. And I know you do, but a lot of people don't care about much else but my about what I look like. So that's why I never want you to paint anything to do with me. Okay. Okay, so twenty minutes. Yeah, choose your own adventure. I got I got Well, are you gonna cry? Are you choosing your adventure or are you gonna cry? Oh. Uh, um. Well, what does that mean? No, I'm not gonna cry. I'm fine. I've got stuff to do. I got paintings to work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So glad to listen to these people sleep while they're typing. I guess this is when you guys write on chat. Fine. Yeah. But that's okay, I just can't see what they're writing either. I can just hear that bleep. Is that see it? I know, I'm in the kitchen. Whatever, I'm just talking. I'm not wrecking your room. I'll leave. 
I'm just saying, I don't know, keep painting. That's cool. Yeah, that's probably telling me, why don't you just go home and then watch or shut the fuck up? It doesn't matter what that person's saying. I just think that that's like, hurry up, like, fuck off, go home. If I want to be part of the fucking session, I'll go log in, so. Doesn't matter what they said, I'll go home and I'll log in. So I'll be there in 20 minutes, bye. She hung up. She hung up. She hung up. She was the best. Damn. Conversationalist that I've had in a long, long time. See it, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hey, Kool-Aid. Okay, guys. What do we got here? She is my talking friend. She talks my ear off. She talks. She talks. She doesn't stop talking. Even if I'm talking, she talks over me. Like me, she makes everything about her, even if it's about me. But I just, you know, i got to like her. I'm used to her. She's an interesting woman, an interesting phenomenon. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay guys, here's my website. You go to it and you decide if I paint well. I think I paint okay. But in ecology see I was thinking about going to school for biology, but ecology, that would be interesting. Hmm. Actually, you know, I don't even know if I like painting what it is I'm painting right now. Something is just off about it. Too segmenty. It's reactive. It's not well thought out. Oh, shit. Shit, man. Excuse me again. Ask me anything, guys. When she comes back, she's going to be very upset when she sees what it is I'm painting. It's her nature. Well, what can I say? What can I do? Okay. Oh. Subset of biology. Have you ever considered painting trains? Yeah, I have thought about painting trains. I'm spooked by trains. Why don't they put a train in here? That's a great idea. That is a great idea. Because I'm spooked by trains. Trains in hell. Planes and trains. And the headlights of automobiles. Hmm. Uh stance on antinatalism is that antinatalism is overlooks the spiritual quality of an individual and that suffering is not always a bad and that imposition only occurs when one exists and not prior to one's existence and that um, People can be antinatalists if they want to be antinatalists. Um, 
but I think it as a political movement is is and as a philosophy it's it's absurd at its, at its seams it's not it's not really to be taken seriously because it assumes that people are always and should be rational creatures when I don't believe that they should necessarily be rational creatures. Oh, oh. Yeah, my cat kind of started to tear up my white suit. It was kind of crazy. Yeah, yeah, I did a open letter to antinatalists where I covered my basic thoughts about it. You have to excuse me while I'm eating. Lily doesn't want any cheese. Lily, puppy, you just want to be scratched, little girl. My little puppy. My little kitty. My little darling. My lion, my prairie lion. A train. I'm glad someone mentioned a train. I really needed that. Um, no, I've never actually painted a train in a train yard. But I did do landscape painting and beachscapes and mountainscapes and and some cityscapes. This is so segmenty. Why am I doing a segmenty painting? I don't particularly want to do a segmenty painting. We live in cities. Cats are great. I was gonna get, think about getting another one. Yeah, we got. Uh, I was gonna get a dog before I considered getting the cat, but there's a 20 pound limit in my condo complex. So I decided against it. Against it is. A whole layer of demons. That's what I've got to produce here. Trains. Trains. I'm going to do a train. Okay. Okay. It's going to be a little train. Going into a tunnel in the side of the wall of hell. Coming out of the side of the wall of hell. That's what we'll do. Yes, indeedy. myself into trouble painting these crazy paintings.
putting three wheels on one side of the train. I think that's how it looks. It's kind of narrow, thin though. I should probably move it back a little, stretch it out a tad. I'll read your comments here in just a second. We live in cities. Something, 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 blah, 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 blah. Okay, what do we got here? Back in the woods. Ooh, wow. Well. Well. Oh, well, thanks, dude. Thanks, eh? Landscapes and the portraits, right on. Right on. Someone named Down and a guest. Well, whatever you go into in terms of ecology or biology, I, I think, I think if you go into something that helps cure men's hairlines from receding. Oh yeah, as a genetic shift, that would be great. But all I know, never mind what I'm saying, it's a vanity, a vanity issue. But that's why I got a mohawk. Yes, indeed, I got myself a mohawk. I just haven't put it up yet. Towering, it's towering, erecting a steeple on my head. Oh yes. See, when I hear trains coming, it's it's like it gets into my very being, my very center. And that's how I was actually identifying and agreeing with Anton, because he had mentioned the power of the phone, the power of sound. And everybody, conference report, Anton, Eric Orwell, uh, I mean, everybody, thou art that... Uh, Laura Lea, Greatex, um, I mean, hell, if I'm subscribed to you and I watch you, you've impacted me in some very personal way, um, and, and it, it's really weird, but trains, trains are definitely, they're like, uh, they, they feel almost like spiritual entities, spiritual symbols to me that rattle my soul, but so do planes. Planes coming over. When I was institutionalized, the psychiatrist said, now, somebody that's psychotic, a plane flew over during the interview, someone who has psychosis would believe that that plane is exacting their position on the planet. And I said to, you know, right then, I was like, that's what's going on with me. That plane is exacting my position on the planet. In, in a, in a extracurricular sense, in a metaphoric sense, in a, another possibility, sort of, sort of sense, the the plane is mapping your position, the train is asking you to get off your ass and do something. That's in the midst of being in a complete spiritual meltdown. That's when you've abandoned rationality and you allow your mind and your imagination to dominate your very essence of your being 
and to start responding to the universe like an animal, like an Egyptian, like you enter the mind of an Egyptian, all of a sudden horned animal gods rule your soul, interact with you on a deep, connective level. Oh yes. You want to see my little train? I gotta fix that train. Everything's very cartoony and very toyish. I kind of wanted it that way, but so why why is what psychotic? Never experienced anything like as you described it. Okay, well, see right there because you have never experienced anything like it then if you had experienced it like it, you would probably be in a psychotic state. But personally, whether or not I'm genetically inclined to be psychotic or whether or not I just read deconstructive philosophies, philosophies of language, language possibilities, and then I deconstructed rationality, deconstructed internal monologue, deconstructed my um, uh, my idealism moved against my own better self-interest, kind of purposely sabotaged uh, a lot of behavior in my life. Oh boy. Oh shit. I just got this desk tonight that this thing is on, and there's a cockroach on it. Shit. Uh. All right, I gotta get more coffee. Excuse me a second. Mindful meditations where a psychologist was saying, get mindful, get in the moment, breathe, focus on the present, that kind of thing. But, uh, yeah, not, not really certain what to say about that. Yeah, just raw perception. Um, see, when I get into a completely static state, and I'm just in the moment, then all of a sudden I'll hear creaks and clicks and other, other uh, moving events, and my cat verifies that they're actually physically there, but I grant agency to the clicks, to the creaks. And so sometimes this empty-mindedness, this raw perception, leads right back into a kind of a spiritual psychotic meltdown or entering into, entering into a kind of a magical imaginative world in my mind by granting agency. But I don't believe it just resides in my mind, and that's what makes me different than most people because I, I've seen some super natural, super radical things in my, in my life and 
I used to be a secular atheist, not dissimilar to Bionic Dance. And then I saw some things, and in an instant, because I could no longer explain them, I couldn't control them. They were ostensible. They were seen by me and my girlfriend at the time. One thing was. And so because it was non-demonstrable, non but it was ostensible, it was as empirical as my hand, meaning that I saw it. It wasn't a trick of the eye. It felt as if I was opening up into a whole new realm. And I wondered whether or not I was supposed to say, keep quiet about it, whether or not it's a super secret that muggles aren't supposed to know about. But I decided that I would talk about it anyway. Because I am a hyper spiritual being. But I just, I need to get more in more of a meditative state. And I don't deny that other people are that way, but I'm looking for kinship with people. Yeah, Philip K. Dick, man. I, I haven't read, I haven't read any of his work, but I've rented all of his movies, except for this one, which is called, some, the, this artist's name, it's got a title in the, in the name. It's something like The Junk Artist, or something like that and it's in French and I can't find it I can't rent it on Netflix or anything but I really want that to see that but um, and I don't know what his later stuff is compared to his earlier stuff yeah 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 when I hear about that it's something else Hmm. Okay, we got ourselves a little train here. It's looking kind of goofy. A little goofy train track here. Look a little goofy. <laughs> Shit, Wolf. Hey, sure, Wolf, you had to come on in. Crack me up, buddy. 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 I'm even gonna put I gotta put a coffee pot in and an eyeball with a needle going through it. And that's down here. Stuff's getting it's gotta get a little darker as you descend. What are light symbols? Easy going, easy listening, very light light symbols. Sorry if I don't look at the comments for a second while I hammer out this. This matchstick. funny as Amendum said, I'm going to paint whatever Das Poot paints. <laughs> and I'm like, well, if you think you can keep up, go for it. You know, I wasn't trying to be cocky or say you couldn't do it. I was just like, I don't really think one mind can you know, do what somebody else was doing, but I guess it was just a challenge thing for him. I'm saying. 
thought it was kind of funny. So what do you think the muggles can become magical like you? So do you think the muggles can be... Well, that's why I make the videos that I make. I'm trying to encourage people to move against their own better self-interest. Kind of the... The... Uh, drop acid, drop out approach. Um, that they need to lose their sense of identity and their sense of idealism and their goals and their dreams and everything. They have to totally submit to nonsense and irrationality and a, co a collapse of their own being in a deconstructive process and only then will they find their spiritual center in kind of the Buddhist nirvana sense and then from there provided that you're in a good set a as a magical creative being you should always journal or draw or do something that invokes the spirits because what you create you become and it reflects in the universe but um, it, there, there might not be any sense in doing any of this unless you first see something that you cannot explain something that you think is is supernatural like Bigfoot or UFOs in my case it was orbs, stars and a ghost and and this this bulbish orb that came right out of my chest like a metaphoric heart and I guess there was there was a black ghost and there was a white head ghost that I saw and but these were all after the fact but I have allowed alien interaction with me to guide me through a actual location driven to a specific location to execute some plan and it failed because at the last minute I got too afraid of this red star that showed up and and I dogged it, I bailed, I ran right underneath it and I, I know I shouldn't have done that but I did it anyway and so I'm always hoping that there's going to be I have the feeling like I'm not supposed to be mentioning any of this. Just this heavy ringing that came into my ear right then. Kind of like, don't make yourself sound too much like a crazy lunatic idiot. Especially when you're in the world and people don't really understand these, these facts. Um, I don't know if I'm just a particular person. I don't know if everyone could do it. I don't know if anyone else can do it. I'm just looking for people that are kindred spirits to it. Mm. The alien wasn't anything that I saw. The alien was like a possession of the mind where you allow your your body to turn into a channel or a vessel and you start hearing alien communication that guides you and it, it it's not a voice in the head, it's a recognition of your environment. Um and so the symbols, the colors, the interaction between objects, the media, stickers on cars, license plates, things that people say, things that you hear, things that you see, all of it comes together in a fashion as to if you're aware of it enough and you're guided by it, then, then you're guided physically through time. And um, <clears throat> it uh, all all I can say is is <laughs> the the powers that be aliens gods uh, interdimensional creatures whatever it is you know I I have no no doubt of them because I've experienced 
what they can do to some extent. I don't know the full capacity of what they can do, but I feel almost as if my the very fabric of my being is just put together molecules that can fall apart in an instant and that, that, that we do have so to speak souls or parallels of our body that, that that transcend our physicality and I trusted it so much that I leaped off of a roof which I fell to the ground and broke myself but at least I allowed myself a spiritual transcendent over the knowledge of gravity to disrupt the very root foundation of our intu our intuition to stay away from pain, to stay away from suffering, uh, to deny gravity, and but I did that at a poor, wrong-headed time. Like everything I'm doing is out of sync with the events when they occur. So like like the greatest American hero. It's like I'm wearing a suit that I can't figure out and I keep screwing everything up again and again and again. I just screw up. Ah. Goddamn audio. Hey, man. I just came out to take a look at some progress. Looks like uh, you've been busy. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I've got, uh, I've got, uh, some, some, uh, I don't know, pentagrams and a matchstick and a crystal and a kind of a, a, a carnivalesque demon head and, uh, a macabre and a star candle and a goat and a sheep. And a car with flames on it, and a a bacon cheeseburger with a pig, and a locomotive train, and I've got a little girl down here holding onto his hand, kind of being pulled up out of hell, and yet he's stepping on a big boob over here, and I put a branch underneath the angel's foot over here. And so that's the progress so far. Is there, is, there is there any particular part of the progress that you like more than the other? Like, do you like doing the drawing part of it more, the painting part, the conceptual part? I, I like I like signing the painting when I'm done. I like that part. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yep. Um, I broke down today and went and bought some uh, clay, so I've been screwing around with uh, clay. I, I kind of like it. It's a lot easier to work with than the other. The magic skull for the milliput or the uh, sculpey. Oh, good. Good, 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 man. That's good to hear. What's that? That's, that's good to hear that you got the clay. Am I too loud? No, not at all. Not at all. You're kind of you're a little you're a little quiet actually. I think everybody else is hearing you though. Um, somebody asked what yep. philosophy Derrida, Wittgenstein, uh, our two favorites. Uh, Derrida. And what would you say? Post-structuralism. Yeah, post-structuralism. Say again. Wittgenstein was kind of early. When did when was when did he when was he alive? Uh, 1930. Um, I think he died. When did he die? Like in 44, maybe 45. I, I kind of forget actually, but I, I think he's. You know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he was alive into the 50s just taking a guess you know i'm trying i'm trying to figure it out i think though I, he was born i think he lived in into his late 50s maybe maybe early 60s but i think late 50s so i think he was born at the turn of the century 
But well, he might it was have... definitely a, you know, one of those were, uh, the whole postmodernist movement, I would, I would think. Um, Derial was certainly, you know, well, he was later. Um, no, I don't think Wittgenstein lived to yeah. 2004. I don't think that's correct. Well, I mean, they technically say that, uh, well, it depends on who you read, you know, like, uh, uh, people argue when it actually began, when it went, or when, 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 like, the post rationalist movement began. Or, but they, I, I know that I've heard that postmodernism started after World War II. That's usually, but that might not necessarily be a field of philosophy. That might just be, like, you know. No, I think, I think like art. Classics. Um, after the Industrial Revolution in art, like Cezanne was one of the first cubists to kind of break things down, and then Picasso hopped in. He really affected things. Um, I mean, there there were a, a bundle of artists that all of a sudden you got ones that started doing really painterly work, kind of like Monet and John Singer Sargent. And and then you've got all of the the cubists uh, into Picasso into Dolly uh, started yeah the surrealist movement and then post postmodernism and deconstructionism came after uh, logical positivism and and theories on language philosophies of language and. Uh, I don't know. I've also read William S. Burroughs. Yeah, it's kind of interesting in a way. Oh, go ahead. God, I gotta help. I've got a, I've got a pretty major lag. But uh, I was just gonna say it's kind of interesting the way that, like, like for example, expressionism. You know, you can study it artistically, or you can study it through music. Uh, the, the different like eras. Yeah. That, uh, that musicians and philosophers and artists went through. That you know they they've a lot of times they're not of course they're not always the same. I don't think there's a surrealism in philosophy and, or music. I, at least I don't know that. The, are you aware of that? Uh well I, I I know it's all you know it's all human expression and it comes in waves and and influences you know things influence other people dramatically but. Um, I can't say I know much about expressionism proper. I mean, I guess I do, but I don't either. I mean, I, I just remember studying it in school and stuff. You know, um, well, Van Gogh is considered an expressionist because he br he brought his emotion into the paint, into the texture, into the into the actual act of painting was where the expressionism comes from less about content. His content was was fine, but it was more the emotive structure and the the actual placement of the paint into into the canvas, into other paint. That's how I think about it at least. Yeah, you know, like this this painting is kinda of like lowbrow carnival esque, you know, juxtaposy sort of art. For just a second, I'm going to turn the camera off for just a minute. I mean, this is a, it's pretty similar to the one that, that I've already done. I, I'm going to move the hand around, but, uh, you know, I mean, they do this every time I've ever used this shit. And uh, I'm just trying to, like, for example, I just look at it, you know, and I'm like, what's wrong with this, you know? Like, I think his legs is, his legs look all right at this point, but, uh, you know, obviously I haven't really worked on my head. I haven't gotten to the head yet. And so now I'm just, Trying to figure out uh, why it looks. Why does it look kind of right from the back? It looks kind of right from the back, but it, it looks kind of screwed up in the front. So, well, you're yeah, it, it's, yeah. You you don't have a heavy chest mass on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm gonna keep right. So like, I'm just gonna keep adding to it. It's gonna be like process of. Uh, uh, I'm just gonna try. Uh, you know, process of elimination or whatever. I like it. I mean, it's fun. It's fun to, uh, to be, you know, like uh, not terribly advanced at something, just kind of novice at it. it. I think I read somewhere where I, I was reading about uh, 
geniuses online, these people who like are brilliant, um, like people with like, I think it was like people had IQs in the, like the 180s or something. And mm-hmm. One of the guys they were talking to said, he said, well, you know, I love to learn. Um, he's like, I don't really like becoming an expert because I, I find it to be tedious. I just, I like to learn and curve, you know, like the, when you, when you start to learn about a subject, you can just kind of really, you know, make you know, t- tons of progress. And when you begin to plateau, then that, you know, like the last 10% is so much harder than the first 90%, you know. But that, that was just a guy, I kind of see what, he's, I kind of see what he means in a way. You know, it's just, the, the first 10% uh, is harder than the last 90%? That makes sense. That totally makes sense. Yeah, talking about being an expert, he was just saying that like to become a, like a qualified expert, it, it really, you know, it's, it's not as much, it's not as much fun as, uh, as like the, when, when you're learning something, I guess is what he meant, but uh, I, I, it's kind of stuck in my head, um, but I, I'm just trying to say that I can kind of see what, he's, what he means, because it is, it is fun, you know, to, to figure out to, the, the problems try to solve the, the, the simplistic issues or whatever. Mm. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's well said. Yeah, God, now I know what I'm going to put here. Yeah, the whole idea of IQ is really fascinating, I think. And you you want to believe in it, and yet it was interesting to read The Mismeasure of Man by Stephen Jay Gould because he's like, IQ is, IQ tests were meant to find out if somebody had a disadvantage, not to find out or equate anyone's advantage mentally um, and so he said IQ tests are, are actually absurd when when they go across the hundred the hundred points scale and that they've been they've been missed I can definitely see that yeah but, I mean um, like like for example if you look up people that are alive today who have the quote unquote highest IQ, half of those people are actually people who create IQ tests. You know, like people who who, uh, who have been solving IQ puzzles for uh, you know, all their lives or and they, they you know, surprise, surprise, they score the highest. I've got an IQ of two hundred and ten and you know, because, because my job is to to write puzzles for you know, the the I don't know. Epstein, what's what's the what's the name of the standard uh, most popular? Wait, you mean like Mensa or something? Name. Well, yeah, like Mensa also. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I, I I definitely agree with it. I always tell my students that, like I had a when I was uh, when I was like in high school. Um, the music teacher at the high school, I, he, he like, I wasn't even taking classes, but you know, he knew I played the guitar and stuff, and he was like, what have you been up to lately, Scott? Because was, I was working at a grocery store at the time, and he was, I think I was bagging his groceries, and uh, I was like, yeah, I've been listening to, uh, I've been listening, to, I was like, you'd be proud of me, I've been listening to a lot of classical music lately, and I'm listening to Mozart, and he was just like, pulled me to the side, and he was like, Mozart was the smartest human being you know, they never lived on the face of the earth. He started telling me about how, how brilliant the guy was. So I, I tell students about that. I, I tell kids about that story, and they're always like, they, they don't believe it. You know, they, they're like, well, he's not a, he's, new, he's not Einstein or whatever. Yeah, that's, a, that's interesting to try to pinpoint what... <laughs> what brilliance is and then to point because somebody does brilliant things you you want to grant them brilliance and and that Amadeus movie 
really did portray him as precocious and you know even even precocious people I, there there was one great movie I'm trying to remember what it was that I saw where this kid that was really precocious at solving math problems and stuff like that by the time he became in his mid 20s you know he's really he was really famous in the show by the time he was like 11 or something for being this math wizard but by the time he got in his 20s he was already washed up and he wasn't solving any new problems and he hadn't really made any substantial headway and it just crushed him I'm trying to God, I wish I remember the name of the film or even who was in the film. Seems like I sold that. I remember that. Uh, yeah, it's like because I, I had heard before that uh, a lot of times kids who uh, uh, kids who show what um, uh, I guess like academic, uh, you know, like academic exceptional ability. When they're young, and they, the other kids have it. They, they they don't keep it a lot of times. It's like people catch up to them. Uh huh. So, so if a kid, if a kid like is brilliant when he's ten years old, then he he's not gonna. He, he may not necessarily be brilliant when he's when he's twenty years old. And like you said, too, I mean, I think they do burn out. Look at this comment that, that A wrote. To conceive an idea is noble. To execute the uh, work is servile. It, it's weird for, for me, the idea, the conception of the idea happens right when the pencil is hitting the paper. It, it's They're one and the same. But if you're speaking of, like, even an architect has to build a model of the architecture and, and work to labor, but they're not the ones doing the construction work to actually build the work and build the build the idea. An engine, an engineer might might design an idea, but he's not the one building the idea. So it, it's interesting how that concept is 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 considered. I think. Considered is my fallback word. I use that because it's saying, it sounds intelligent. It's open. It's open-ended, and I get a lot of I get a lot of mileage out of it. It's considerable. It's consider this consideration. Yeah, or if you will, I used to hear that a lot too. If you will, must you say, so to speak. Play also to play to enact a play to to play in your mind to you let your intellect play. That becomes. A you big you don't want a chance to have any idea if uh, you can use copper as a um, armature, do you? Because I really don't know. I, like if if it's gonna if I if I fire in a kiln when it's is it going to like melt or I just don't know I mean I, I, it's like I sat down and start working on this thing I was like oh I got my I got my my clay this it didn't, didn't like great and I was like oh shit I have no clue you know, how to like do the base or whatever and obviously I can't like uh, you know put a block of wood in a kiln well it pulled I wish old I'm sure she would know. I say you do a test of it and, you know, just get the copper and then line up different widths of clay around it and throw it in the kiln and see what happens. Yeah, that's true. The problem is I don't, I don't have access to the kiln right, right, uh, you know, anytime soon. It was fun. It was fun going to the, uh, to the place to buy it there. It's like... Everybody that worked at the at the at the old store seemed pretty cool. Or the pottery store, they were all pretty laid back. Oh, hey guys. We we need. Uh, I hope you don't mind, sure. Well, if I wanted to play a couple minutes here of the soft parade.
No, I can't do it because oh, I'm works. recording. I, I, I think I'll just shut off the recording yet and thank everybody for liking my mohawk. And um, and I can start another recording later. Then I can listen to the doors and not worry about copyright infringement and all that jazz. Ciao.